Well, good afternoon. Good afternoon. God loved the world so that he gave. That sounds like John 3.16. The text we're talking, we're getting ready for Sunday. This is a funny thing. So I, this is my first time now, well, this, almost one year through with the three-year lectionary liturgical cycle. Mm -hmm. All my whole life, I've one year. So instead, the Sunday, so we have Pentecost, then Trinity. And in the old historic, it was Sundays after Trinity, Trinity 1, 2, 3. And now, though, it, it, we call them Trinity, uh, Sundays after Pentecost. But even stranger, I'm trying to figure this out, is it's not like you don't just count. You go and look for a date range, and it's like proper number something. So what right. are we, like proper number nine or eight something? Eight or nine. Eight yeah. or nine, mm -hmm. something. You just pick the thing in there. It's proper nine, but it's the first Sunday after Pentecost. That's what we call it. But we enter into the season of the church. This is for everybody, is that kind of from now until the festive season kicks in, at uh, in probably end of, beginning of December, maybe a little bit before you got ramping up with like St. Michael's in September and Reformation and All Saints in October getting warmed up. Yep. Then you get to December and you're in, and then you're in the sort of festive half of the church here. Now we're in what's called ordinary time, where we consider how Jesus and the Spirit that He sends from His throne comes to us Christians and enlivens us to love God and one another. So that's kind of the idea. Uh, and we're working in the Gospel of Matthew. And the hymn that we have for this Sunday is this great hymn, God loved the world so that he gave. So what do we know about the, the music here or the hymn? Well, it's interesting. Um, for once, we don't have an anonymous person who's writing this or an unknown. You know, I, that, I think that's actually something. So for the, like, the fest of the feast stuff, those, are, those hymns are going way, 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 way back. back. Yeah. Yeah. But some of the now we're into uh, maybe some newer hymns for a while. Yeah, well, we're now we're now we're in the 1600s, 1700s, 1800s. So Contemporary there's, stuff. There's a little more, a little more track. I, did you know this? I consider anything after 1750 to be contemporary, contemporary. Christian music. That's so right. That's okay. <laughs> so this is close, I think. So the tune for this one is called Saint Crispin. Mm. Uh, it was written by George Elvey from uh, let's see, 1816, 1893. He uh, named it after. Crispin, who was a third century Roman martyr. Ah. So that was kind of interesting. I needed to do a little more work on that. Uh, yeah, first know. published in 1863, uh, some people might recognize this tune, which, which goes with another popular text, Just As I Am Without One Queen. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey. Um, George Elvey was named uh, to a position at St. George's Chapel in Windsor, and he taught there for many, many, many years. And it's interesting, I started thinking about that name, and I thought, that sounds really familiar. Well, then I looked at the list of the hymns that he has written, and one of the tunes is called St. George's Windsor, which happens to be, Come, ye thankful people, come. Dun, 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 and then he's also dun, written, dun, 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 Crown him with many oh, yeah. crowns, the, the tune yeah. for that. So a couple of, three, three big tunes here. Wow. It was really, really quite great. He's he's a prolific composer. Wrote a number of things. He was at the court in and in served in a court for fifty some years, I think. Yeah, almost fifty years, and wrote a lot of hymns and settings. Um, and so, uh, at some point, this text was or this tune was combined with the with the text. Now, the text was written by a man. His name was Johann Olieris. Which, if you look in the hymnal, yes. back in two thousand and six. He wasn't given any credit at that yeah, point. Yeah. So somewhere between 2006 and when they published the uh, the companion here just last this last year, that some more research was done and they were able to determine who actually wrote this text. So he comes from the post huh. post 30 years war period. So you know you have the 30 years war period, a lot of hardship there, but I, I suspect that the post war years were not much better. All right. Um, and so he was in, in in a lot of difficult situations too. He. Uh, was quite a theologian of the time, and he uh, wrote a number of great texts. Included "Comfort, Comfort Ye My People." Yeah. Um, oh, how great is your compassion! The Lord, my God, be praised! And Lord, open now my heart to hear. So those are wow four four really great texts. He, he was a Lutheran guy. He was. Mm, I don't think he was a Lutheran those guy. Sound. He's, I mean, those those he, hymns all strike me as they, uniquely yeah. Lutheran. But yeah. yeah. Uh, pre, uh, uh, I want to say he was. Well, no, I'm going to get it mixed up with the other guy. All so. right. All right. Um, and then this, these texts, so these were German texts that were written. And so we have a, there's a, there's a pastor by the name of August Kroll. 
yeah. who uh, was one of the first, kind of the first significant um, per, uh, people in the Missouri Synod to translate German hymns into English. Okay. I've, I've seen his name. Right? Look, yep. there it says translated August Kroll. That's yep. kind of a cool name. So he, August he, he was a professor at the, at, in, in Fort Wayne uh, of German. Okay. And uh, he was in a really, but he was in a really unique, because he knew the German language so well, and he was so much into English and poetry and prose, he, he was really good at doing the translations. So he not only translated that hymn, but he translated Jesus I Will Ponder Now, mm -hmm. yep. I Am Content, My mm -hmm. Jesus yeah, Liveth Still, yeah, uh, Draw Us to Thee, How Can I Thank Thee, Lord, wow. uh, O God, Forsake Me Not, Lord My God Be Praised, and Abide, O Dearest Jesus, among others. Wow. So he was he's a pretty prominent name, only second to Catherine Winkworth, who we have a lot of translations by sure. in our hymnal. So only only she passed him up in the number of uh, of translations in the Missouri Synod. Wow. Hymn tradition. So and that that move, you know, from German to English, was a, it, was, it was a risky move. That was a big deal. But half those guys back then said you can't be Orthodox if you're not in German. Yeah. I think they might have been right, but I don't. <laughs> but that just so that's a, but uh, you know that's t so, so he died in 1923. So he was working before. Well, maybe. Before, during World War One, uh, in as the as that stuff was starting to transition right. over, he he uh, he had a hymnal that he was that published was published in 1889, uh, Evangelical Lutheran Hymn Book is what it was called, oh, and he wow. had a, a ton of hymns. In fact, a ton of translations. In fact, he was he was pretty uh, quite a number of translations in that. In now th that, in this that says hymn. also the other hymn on the other page. But this says long. LM long meter. Long meter. For the meter. Now, how, normally it has like six, eight, six, eight. So, and I, I kind of understand that, but I've never known what the what long meter actually. So it's a it's a it's a just a, it's just another set of numbers. So if you look at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. So instead of being six, eight, six, eight, it's eight, 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 eight. Oh. oh. So it's just called long meter oh. instead of being called short meter. I thought it was more complicated than that. Not quite. Wow, yeah, that's great. Yeah. Well, good. Well, should should we look at some of the text here? Sure, um, be great. Why don't? What if we? Uh, s you want to sing, sing the bit? first couple yeah. stanzas? example of what you know when we when we're looking at hymns and hymnody and church music and things like this we want to say is it about Jesus does it mention is it and this is all about Jesus I mean it's just laying before us the good news that Christ is our Redeemer it's really beautiful and then it has this baptism in here in stanza four but it's so hard to sing that there's like three or four hymns that have baptism in it and you can't ever fit it into the music <laughs> Why well, is that? Right. Well, because you've got that kind of silly, not really silly, just kind of a difficult sil syllable there, tism. Tism. What do you do that is? It's officially, I think it's one syllable, but it, but, but it makes it sound like two. Two so, Your baptism. Your baptism grass. Tism. 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 Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a, huh. So it's hard to put baptism into a hymn. It is, it is hard. But here it is. Yeah. You just got to work through it. You have to. You have to deal with it. And justified by Jesus' blood, your baptism grants the highest good. That's the, I mean, that baptism is the sacrament of justification. Mm -hmm. It's the, where Jesus 
washes us and cleanses us and forgives all of our sins. It's great. Be of good cheer. God's own Son forgives all sins, which you've done. It's just beautiful. It's filled with comfort. Wonderful. I, I love the fifth verse, too. Uh, if you're sick, if death is near, this can be your, tr- this can be your cheer. You know, yeah. this, this cheers your troubled heart. It's really... Let's sing that one. Why don't we sing the fifth stanza? Fifth one, okay. okay. That's nice. sick, if death is near, this truth your troubled heart can cheer. Christ Jesus saves your soul from death, that is the firmest ground of faith. I like how this is, it's a preaching hymn. And I just, it comes into my memory, like all the times that I've been singing this when people are in the hospital, Mm -hmm. when people are on their deathbed. Mm -hmm. It's a preaching hymn. It says, it takes the faith and it presses it right into it. So it's, uh, you know, this idea that when we sing, we're, sometimes we're praising God. Sometimes we're confessing to one another. Sometimes we're comforting ourselves. This is a, this is that confessing preaching thing. It's really quite great. All right, and it fits in perfectly with the theme for the Sunday where Jesus is sending out workers into the harvest to preach the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God is nothing other than his church, and, and it's the preaching of the king, the Lord Jesus, who's here. So that's great. Well, thank you. Anything else about the hymn or the Sunday? We're good? All right, we're ready for this Sunday. Proper eight or something. <laughs> Pentecost one. All right, God be praised.